Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. We are reading from verse number 13. We want just to look into something to do with the epistles of Paul to the church in Thessalonica. And this is 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. We are reading from verse number 13. We have it in NIV from verse number 13. And I want you please to have your Bibles with you. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 verse number 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. So that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. 14. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring him, will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of, an, of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Amen. Say amen. amen. Powerful. 17, can we all it together if you can? After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the crowds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Glory to God. Ladies and gentlemen and brothers and sisters in the Lord, it has pleased the Lord today to have this message been taken across into, the, into your spirit. And I want you to know that there is something very important, brothers and sisters, and wherever you're watching me from, that would be very necessary for you to pay very close, in, uh, close attention and close listening ear. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. This is the church in Thessalonica. It is one of the churches that Apostle Paul founded on his second missionary journey when he was ministering the gospel in Greece. Thessalonica is one of the influential, influential cities in Greece. Very, very powerful city. And for your own information, the church that Apostle Paul started in Thessalonica in his second missionary journey, he only pastored the church for three weeks, 21 days. After 21 days, he left the church. And he went on to Berea. After Berea, then he went on to Athens. Then from Athens, he proceeded to Corinth. Now my focus today is what happened when Apostle Paul, the great man of God, was in Thessalonica. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that there is a message that I want to put across into your spirit. Very, very important and very, very essential. This was a time when Apostle Paul was ministering the, the word of the Lord in Thessalonica. He had come from one region called Philippi or in Philip. After preaching the gospel in Philip, there was, there was a fight there. There was an opposition that rose in Philippi. And the man of God freed from there and he went to Thessalonica. When Apostle Paul is in Thessalonica, he began to preach in synagogues. I would love to put across to you, brothers and sisters, what is a synagogue? You have heard the word synagogue before. Synagogue simply means a gathering of ten Jews speaking the word of God. In those days, when 10 Jews come together, male Jews, 10 of them, they would form 
what is called a synagogue. And the apostle Paul found the synagogue, not the church, a synagogue in Thessalonica, where ten Jews gathered together and they began to share the law of Moses. And they had not known about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Apostle Paul listened unto them, he began to teach and preach the word of God. And some of them believed the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and they were converted into Christianity. And the church started. When Apostle Paul started the church in Thessalonica, one week ended, he was pastor in the church. Second week ended, he was pastor in the church. Third week ended, he was pastor in the church. As he was about to go into the fourth week, another opposition arose in Thessalonica. They had to chase Paul out of Thessalonica. And Apostle Paul left the church, a baby church, that was only born and has, has been in existence for the maximum of 21 days. This was a baby church that never knew a lot about God. And they never knew a lot about Christianity. And they wanted to know more about God. And they were so hungry to learn, to learn more about Jesus and about eternal things. Church, are you with me? Are you in the house? Are you being blessed already with what I'm talking to you? Those of you watching on TV, are you being blessed already? Because one day you'll be, you'll be reading the book of Thessalonica, or First Thessalonica and Second Thessalonica. It's, there, it's therefore very important for you to have the history on how the church was born in Thessalonica so you can get the revelation from there of what God is trying to do or to communicate to the church. Say a wonderful amen. amen. Now finally listen to me then. Apostle Paul had left the church that was only born for 21 days and he left Thessalonica where he went when he lived in Corinth there was an adversity that rose a demon that rose to attack the church in Thessalonica this demon entered in the philosophers men of physical knowledge and physical wisdom they penetrated the church to deceive the men and the women of God and I want to say, brothers and sisters, we are living today in the end times. We are living today in the end age. We are living today in the age where we are about to conclude and summarize the happenings of the whole world. It is therefore very important for you as a child of God to have what I call spiritual sensitivity. To be able to know the times and the dates that we are in. Never live blind. The days we're in are evil. Apostle Paul said, redeem your time. For the days we're in are evil days. Shout amen somebody here. Amen. Don't leave your eyes blind. We are living in an evil days. Most of us Christians today, we have lost spiritual intelligence. We don't understand times and the days and the seasons that we are in. We can't interpret the seasons that we are in today. Very, very pathetic. Listen to me, family and friends. The day you will realize and you begin to understand the time, the dates, the days, and the deaths, the seasons that we are in now, your Christian life will change. It will change. It will change. You have to understand the days and the times that we are in. We are not living in the... We, life is no longer where it used to be 25, 75 years ago, 40 years ago. No church. We are in a very different dispensation with a different generation altogether. Life has completely changed. Now the church in Thessalonica was attacked by men with the wrong philosophers, wrong teachings. They began to Divert the church from the major focus and the main focus of eternity. And the church was so confused. And most of them began to go weak in their Christian faith towards God. And Apostle Paul began to write to them the epistle of Thessalonica. Before I proceed, let me also tell you this. They had questions. Remember it was just a baby church. 
existence in a, existence only in 21 days the question was when we die where do we go what about those believers who already died where will they go where have they gone where they are right now what are they doing what about us that are still alive when is jesus gonna come and find us what will happen when he returns they wanted to understand what's gonna happen in the end of the age and this is the age where you and me are living in right now when you started this in theology is known as eschatology eschatology simply means the study of the end time events and their seasons and times hi are you with me do you want to go to heaven do you want one day to see jesus face to face do you want one day to interact with the angels in heaven and live eternally in the presence and the glory of god wave your hands let me see brothers and sisters if that is your goal glory to god exactly and that's the whole purpose why there is christianity and why jesus christ came and died on the cross of calvary now that that was a blow ha -ha. that was a, a misconception that was in thessalonica and apostle paul began to erase that ignorance in them and he began to erase that misunderstanding in them and he began to align them in the purpose and the will of god for their for eternity now listen to me church he began to tell them to say wait a minute those believers who died and then right now they are dead they will rise again they will rise again those who died in christ they will rise again there is resurrection i want to establish this into you right now resurrection is real men will rise up again and they will see jesus face to face resurrection is key and is there and is coming and those who died in christ will rise again a second question was what about us that are still alive today what will happen to us when jesus christ is coming family and friends listen to me this is what's going to happen there's going to be a very serious event that will take place across the whole world the church will be taken back to god jesus before his total return on the surface of the earth there's going to be something that's going to happen the church the church that church with that blemish will be caught up will be taken we are going to be taken alive it will happen as i'm preaching to you right now you will just see prophet hara disappearing and going to heaven that is exactly what's going to happen in the bible calls it the first flight the first flight the first flight and all of us here we are after that first flight we do not have to miss the first take off to glory are you watching are you listening to what i'm saying those of you watching wherever you're watching me from the whole purpose why we have gathered in church right now is that we must be equipped and trained and prepared for the soon coming of the king our lord jesus christ jesus is coming again and when you zoom into times and seasons you will discover that we are not in the beginnings of the times we are in the end of the time the age is about to close the age is about to close those of you watching the age is about to close it's no longer business as usual in church prepare yourself and position yourself jesus is coming again whether you are married or you're not married he's coming whether you are rich or you're not rich he's coming whether you've got children or not children he is coming whether you are in church or out of church jesus is coming prepare yourself prepare yourself he is coming very soon he is coming and those who are in christ jesus at his return this time around he will not touch his his feet 
on the ground the bible says it's gonna be in the air what a wonderful experience brothers and sisters if you've never walked in the air before this day you will be suspended in the air you will walk in the air you'll be taken up in what a wonderful experience that will be exactly it will happen it will happen we shall be taken we shall be taken the word is caught up we shall be caught up we shall be caught up in your in, in in our in our bibles listen to me in our christian bibles english versions whatever version it is you will never hear the word rapture the word rapture is not necessarily um in our bibles english bibles we have the word caught up caught up the word caught up it's a word in latin which simply means to be taken to be taken are you listening to me and that is the same word synonym it's a similar name in the meaning with the word rapture which is in latin raptu which also means to be caught up to be caught up that's why we take the word rapture the rapture of the saints, the disappearing of the holy ghost from the surface of the earth the going up again of the holy spirit are you listening to me and we shall be taken now listen to me can you stand up sir you see you see there was a moment when the holy spirit descended and that was on the day of pentecost he came down he is now residing inside of you and there's gonna be a moment and time when the holy spirit would depart from the surface of the earth going back to where he came from to god almighty he will disappear from the earth the day the holy spirit will leave the earth because he lives inside of you as he goes up he will take together with you ha! that is rapture that is rapture it's gonna be like Are you already gone? <laughs> Come back. <laughs> that is rapture. It's a going back of the Holy Ghost in us. Now because he lives in us, he will take along with us and we shall be taken to meet the Lord in the air. And we're going to meet Jesus right there in the air. And we're going to see him face to face. And those who died in the Lord, those who are already in the grave right now, we that are alive will not precede them because they have already gone into an immortal dimension they are already in a, in a speed form so to them they are ahead of us and we are coming behind them they'll be the first to resurrect from the from the from from the dead and to see the lord to meet the lord in the air and then we shall follow suit and we shall all go to meet the lord in the air brothers and sisters what an experience not to lose and not to miss do you remember Jesus went to the heavens one day on the, on, on the Mount of Olives? Yes. They saw him going up. They saw him going up. There was a force. There was a spiritual energy that raised him from, from the ground and, and took him up. And the Bible says, and crowds uh, welcomed him. And uh, that same power, that same energy, that same force will carry us up on that day. And we are going to interact with him right in the air. Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. This is the whole message the church in Thessalonica needed to understand. And Apostle Paul began to paint down to them. That's where the first and second Thessalonica came from. They wanted to understand the destination of the dead. They wanted to understand what will happen to those that are still alive. Now, brothers and sisters, listen to me. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. The age is coming to an end. Lastly, let me show you what an age is all about. When we are talking of the age, there are two things that makes up an age. Those of you watching on TV, there are two things that makes up an age. When we say this age is coming to closure, what is an age? What makes up an age? An age is made up of two things. Number one, generation. 
generation. What is generation? The breed of people. The species of men. A class of a certain people. It's a breed of human beings. Generation. A people. A certain class of human beings. A class of the existence of people. That makes up an age. Number two. Dispensation. What is a dispensation? Dispensation simply means what is being released at that particular time. The thing that is given out at that particular time is taken from the word dispenser. Or you have heard the word water dispenser. Water dispenser simply means it's a machine or it's an equipment that releases water. That is called water dispenser. So what makes an age? Age. Number one is generation. Number two, dispensation. Dispensation simply means what is being given out. The message that is being released at what particular time. In this age, there is a generation of you and me. And in this generation, there is a message that is being dispensed, given out, released distributed what is the message for this generation what is the dispensation for this generation the message for this generation is jesus is coming soon jesus is coming again jesus is coming again and when an age is coming to an end what comes to an end are two things. Number one, generation. Our existence will be wiped out. And that's the reason why we shall be taken. Because we will no longer exist on this earth the way we are right now. So this generation will be wiped out. Number two, the message will change then. So the message in the days of Apostle Paul in the days of Elijah, in the days of Elisha, in the days of Moses, in the days of Abraham, it's not the message we dispense now. No. Our generation has got the mandate to prepare the church for the soon coming of the king. To prepare the bride for the soon coming of the groom. Because it's about to be done a wedding ceremony feast up in the heavens. Very soon, the groom is coming to catch on or to catch up with the bride. And the message that this generation is dispensing is a message to prepare the church for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have not received Christ yet to be the Lord and personal Savior, then I don't know what you're waiting for. Because tomorrow never comes today is